Any comments on the exposure people get while flying? Absolutely. So probably the easiest way to contextualize this is to go just from coast to coast, from the East Coast to the West Coast here in the United States. And if you did that, you'd get about three and a half millirem of dose. What you see behind me is a chart of all the common sources of dose that a member of the public gets here in the United States, where half of your annual dose is from background, natural background, and the other half comes from medical, way over there. And that totals around just over 620, 630 millirem, where this natural part from background, that's about 320 millirem per year. So a coast-to-coast -coast flight, three and a half millirem, that's basically three days, three and a half days worth of radiation, something like that. And to contextualize the risk that you get from that, you actually have to get upwards of about 10 rem before we get any statistically significant increases in cancer risk. So that means you got to go well above a, a thousand times larger to get any kind of measurable radiogenic risk, as opposed to just the natural stuff that we have here, like for example from space, where you get most of your dose from air flight. And to also put that into context, the EPA limit for a nuclear facility at the site is 10 millirem. So the maximum dose that a nuclear facility can release at the, at the, at the fence to a member of the public that might be living there is 10 millirem. 10 millirem per year is the EPA limit. And again, a regular flight from basically one coast to the other, that's three and a half millirem. So I hope that helps to contextualize this issue of radiological risk. I know people are really scared of it. But as a general rule, our regulations are incredibly protective so that they're way, way, way below anything that would cause any measurable harm. And that's intentional. We are conservative by design. So thanks for that question. Hope it answered it. Hope you have a good day. Bye.